Marla. Amen. God is good all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. And it is good to be here and worship with all of you here in the sanctuary. It's wonderful to be with those that are joining us on our Facebook Live. I want to invite you to say hello in the chat. And Kathy's here to interact with you, so please um, participate in that way. We would love that. And welcome to those that are joining us through our YouTube channel as well. No matter what time of day it is or where you're worshiping, we are glad that you are worshiping with us. Indeed, it is a beautiful day to praise the Lord, to come together as a community, and to be renewed. And in a spirit of renewal, let's stand and sing, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. standing and join Kyle in the call to worship. Come, Lord God, and be with us in this hour. Too often our cares and our worries keep us at a distance from you, our God, and from one another. Come, Lord God, and speak a word of comfort to the troubled people. Help us to hear you, Lord God, in the quietness of these moments. Let us join in prayer. Holy One, One prepare, prepare us, us to receive, receive your word. As we listen in faith and hope, open our souls to your quenching waters. Free us from the confinements of our hearts, that we may hear the promise of your love. Amen. I want to invite you to sing Jesus Loves Me, and I want to invite the kids to come forward. Come up here. 
Good morning. And good morning to those that are joining us on YouTube and Facebook as well. How are you today? Are you good? I'm glad you're here today. You're being very quiet today. Did you know we were talking about being quiet today? <laughs> yes, I wanted to talk with you about being quiet. Not because you always have to be quiet in church. We're glad you're here. And being quiet can be very hard to do. It is for me. Is it for you? Sometimes? Yeah, sometimes it is. Well, I brought this book with me. It's the quiet book. And as I thought about being quiet, I thought, it's really hard to be quiet. And I'm not always very quiet. And I saw this book, and it reminded me that there are many kinds of quiet. There's, there's, can you see the pictures? You can come closer if you want to. Ron, can you see the pictures in the camera? I know Ron likes to. Oh, he can. Um, there are many kinds of quiet. First one, awake kind of quiet. And I'm just going to read some of them on this side. This don't scare the robin quiet. See, there's a bird. Do you sometimes need to be quiet not to scare the animals? Yeah. And coloring in the lines quiet when you're really focused on doing something, sometimes you get quiet. Uh-huh. Hide and seek quiet, right? If you're hiding and maybe don't want somebody to find you, you're really quiet. Yeah, like hiding under the pew. Uh-huh. Maybe swimming underwater. I don't know if you swim underwater yet. But I, I have a pool at my house. You have a pool? That is wonderful. Oh, a big one. Yeah, a big one. That is great. And there's lollipop quiet. Do you ever sometimes be eating at some candy or some food that's yummy and you're really quiet because you're focused on eating? Uh-huh. Lots of different ways of being quiet. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> In, in, in our scripture lesson today, the prophet I, um, Elijah was, was hiding out in this cave, and he w it was really quiet, and he heard a noise in the quiet, because sometimes we hear noises in the quiet. If you're really, really quiet, you might actually hear yourself breathing. Can you hear yourself breathe? Can you practice that? Oh, that's awesome. And guess who else is in the quiet? God is in the quiet talking to us. God talks to us in the stillness and the quiet that we have in life too. And I want you to remember that. And remember that God loves you. Will you pray with me? Will you repeat after me? Dear God, Dear God thank, you thank you for talking to us. Talking to us. Help us, Help us to be quiet. Be quiet. Enough, to hear. Enough to hear. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. And let's sing, Fill My Cup, Lord. this time of, of sharing our joys and concerns as a community, I want to remind you to be in prayer, ask you to be in prayer throughout the week for all the joys and concerns that are listed on our prayer list that came out with the bulletin. If you've not received a copy of that or have a prayer that you'd like added to that, please send us an email at hopewellumcgroveport at gmail.com. And we have um, updated the prayer list, so if there is a prayer that was taken off that you want to be added back on, please let us know. We try to have some accuracy with that. 
Are there joys or concerns you want to lift up, Tracy? It is such a blessing to hear Pat back here again. Thank you. And so she's here. Yes, we are glad you are back with us. And we miss those that are not with us in person. We're glad that you're able to join us as much as possible online. Um, Jewel Rose that I asked for prayer for last week, um, last couple weeks, uh, she's 93 years old. And Friday she had a valve replacement and was... Uh, was successful and was due to come home the next day so thank you for your prayers praise god thank you for that praise report um, i have a joy that rachel was going back into the classroom this year it was kind of a sudden thing she was supposed to be tech coaching for another year but if she stayed with that she would um not be guaranteed a position in, uh, in particular she would have to go where they sent her which could be anywhere three through nine any school in the district so they called her and had a seventh grade ela position available and she decided to go out of the coaching and back into the classroom at that middle school south which is where she loves i don't know how anybody likes middle school but <laughs> <laughs> but i'm just happy that that she got a position back where she would like to be great I think Mary Jane had one. Go on. Okay. Yeah, Steve came over and said something about his real good friend. They've been great friends through grade school, has throat cancer. <coughs> his name's Kurt Stewart, and he's from Asheville. <laughs> We have family coming in from Connecticut, Bobby and his family, and uh, safe travels, if you would, please. And everybody's welcome. It's next Saturday. If they, I left a thing out on the bulletin board, everybody's welcome. I have a joy. We're back from vacation, <laughs> many. And um, last week we were in Chautauqua, and we had a church at the uh, United Methodist House, and our pastor... Uh, gave her sermon uh, barefoot. So I see you have sandals on this morning, so, you know, feel free. <laughs> <laughs> You're speaking to my heart. <laughs> Are there any joys or concerns? I want to lift up my friend um, Gary, who is at the James and um, likely to be transferred to hospice care. So, and Mary Jane? Yes, Duke and Nora, very grateful for the video that we sent. I know we have been sending video greetings to some of the folks that we have not been here in a while that have been a part of our community, and that's been a big blessing. So. There are many ways in which we can reach out to the community and reach out to those that are not with us. And thank you for participating in a variety of ways in doing that. Let us pray. Oh, gracious and loving God, we come today for our cups, our hands, our hearts to be filled up, O oh Lord. We come to let go of thoughts in our minds that are weighing us down, O oh Lord. We lift them up to you. We know that our burdens are lighter when we share them with you, O oh Lord. That you are there to walk alongside us, to carry us, to let us rest in your arms as we need to, O oh Lord. Lord, continue to give us rest and renewal. Give us strength, O oh Lord. Help us to be your hands and your feet out in the community, reaching out to those that we're missing in our community, those that have not been with us for a while, those that are homebound, O oh Lord. 
We desire for all to know that they are loved, O oh Lord. And we come here to be reminded that we are loved too, O oh Lord. We come for renewal and our strength to be restored, O oh Lord. We give thanks for Pat being back a part of our community this day, O oh Lord. Lord, we lift up to you, um, Bobby, and we ask for safe travels as they come from Connecticut, O oh Lord. We give thanks for safe travels of vacations that we have had. Lord, we give thanks for a successful valve replacement for Miss Rose. We give thanks that Rachel's going to be back doing something that she loves in a place that she likes to be, O oh Lord. Lord, we lift up to you, Kurt, and others that are, in, that are struggling with cancer at this time. Lord, we lift up to you, Gail and Jackie, who are not with us this day as well. Lord, we know that all that we have comes from you, O oh Lord. Sometimes we forget all the blessings that you give to us leaving them like breadcrumbs along our path of life, O oh Lord. Lord, this day we come. We come to be in your presence, seeking your light, O oh Lord. We pray that your light might grow continually brighter in us and through us. In the name of Jesus, amen. And now Kyle's going to read us the scripture lesson for today. The Lord said, Go out and stand in the mountain before the Lord. The Lord is passing by. A very strong wind tore through the mountains and broke apart the stones before the Lord. But the Lord wasn't in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord wasn't in the earthquake. After the earthquake, there was a fire, but the Lord wasn't in the fire. After the fire, there was a sound, thin, quiet. When Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his coat. He went out and stood at the cave's entrance. A voice came to him and said, Why are you here, Elijah? He said, I've been very passionate for the Lord God of heavenly forces because of the Israelites have abandoned your covenant. They have torn down your altars and they have murdered your prophets with the sword. I'm, I'm the only one left and now they want to take my life too. The Lord said to him, Go back through the desert to Damascus and anoint Hazel as king of Aram. Also anoint Jehu, Nimshah's son, as king of Israel, and anoint Elijah from Abel Mohalot, Shaphat's son, to succeed you as prophet. Whoever escapes from the sword of Hazel, Jehu, will kill. Whoever escapes from the sword of Jehu, Elijah will kill. But I have perse persevered through those who remain in Israel, totaling 7,000, all those who knees, whose knees haven't bowed down to Baal and whose mouths haven't kissed him. This is the word of God for all God's people. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Amen. What are you doing here? Let us pray. Lord, you know what's on our hearts and what's on our minds. Lord, you know that we come here for a variety of reasons one of which is because we find this to be a place to receive a blessing from you, O oh Lord. Lord, open our hearts, open our minds to receive those blessings that you have for us. In the name of Jesus, amen. It's kind of a strange question to ask in some ways. What are you doing here? And if I walked around with, with Ron's microphone asking you what you were doing here, you might have a variety of answers of what are you doing here. Sometimes we know exactly why we are where we are and why we're doing what we're doing. And sometimes it's the beginning of a journey into something a little bit deeper. I think about many years ago when I... Um, saw in the bulletin at the church where I was attending about a new small group that was starting. And something about the description of that group was something that I thought, well, maybe I'd like to participate in that. 
So we came on a Wednesday night and we met in the chapel and the pastor gave us a, a scripture, read us a scripture lesson and gave us some words that were very inspiring to me. And then we went to our small groups. And in our small groups, we began with lessons about how to be a good listener. I was exhausted. I had worked, I was a full-time worker. I was a full-time graduate student and I was studying counseling, I had been through many trainings of how to be a good listener. I had been trained to lead group therapy, and I was in this group and I thought, what in the world am I doing here? <laughs> why am I here? <laughs> and we got asked the question of why we were here. And by the time there was so much practicing of listening skills and reflecting back why everyone was there, and it was my turn, I had no idea why I was there anymore. I was like, I'm not really sure I'm in the right place. I'm not sure what words came out of my mouth because I was trying to be very kind and nice at that point, but I was very discouraged. And I was disappointed because it wasn't what I had expected. I didn't know what to expect, but that wasn't it. And in that moment, I kept being asked that question and I reflected throughout the next week, why are you there? And as if God was asking me that question to go a little deeper, why are you here? And I had to answer that question before I could go back the next week because I thought maybe the answer is I don't need to be here. Because sometimes we, we're asked that question, why are we here? And the answer is we're in the wrong place or maybe at the wrong time, right place, wrong time, wrong time, right place. There just might not be a match there. But I did go back and I still have friends from that group. And it was a wonderful experience of deepening my relationship with God and with others. But sometimes we get to that place where we're not really sure why we are where we are. And that is where Elijah finds himself. God asking Elijah, what are you doing here? Elijah is a prophet in Israel. He's a prophet in Israel a long way from home. See, Elijah got really tired. Elijah had been prophesizing. And Elijah watched as Israel, people, person after person, turn their back on God and worshiped a false God. Person after person, altars torn down, replaced with altars to Baal. The king there, his wife Jezebel, she worshiped Baal, and so that's where the direction was going with, with things. And Elijah knew that the Lord was still alive and speaking to him and wanting to speak to the people of Israel. He went where God sent him to go, and God provided for him along the way. He even took on all the prophets of Baal. Elijah himself, the lone prophet, the last one who hadn't been ex executed in Israel. He took on all this hundreds of prophets of Baal. He said, let's have a little contest here. Let's see whose God is real. You sacrifice a bull, I'll sacrifice one. We'll put him here and see whose God can light it on fire. And the God of Baal couldn't light it on fire. And Elijah says, I believe in my God so much. I have faith in God that God will do this. And he knew that he was aligned with God. He poured water on it even. And we know that pouring water on something makes it harder for fire to burn. But God was faithful. God worked through Elijah. And this miracle occurred. It was a miracle after miracle that he was a part of. And still in seeing all of this, the response of the queen, kill Elijah. Take him out. After all, when, when God was so powerful, Elijah then took on all the prophets and executed them. So it was just him. And she says, that's fine, I'm going to take care of executing you. And he ran away. 
He said, I'm out of here. He's at the point of being discouraged, disillusioned, and he goes away. And he doesn't just slip away to the next um, area where there's a new king, with another king where he would be safe. No, he goes there and then he gets rest. God gives him food and water and rest for the journey. And instead of going back, he goes deeper away, further away, 40 days, a long time thinking about Jesus in the wilderness for 40 days being tempted. 40 days he's running. And he runs to the, the Mount of Hob, where the, Mount Hob, the same place that Moses went, where he experienced God in the burning bush. So whether Elijah was running away or running to, I'm not sure. If he was running to this holy place as sometimes we do, we come to the holy place, and for some of you, this is your holy place or one of your holy places that you come to to rest and renew yourself, to hopefully sit back and breathe a little bit deeper, to get a new perspective on life. There's where Elijah finds himself, and he's asked this question, what are you doing here? And in the text, this is the second time that he's asked this question. And interestingly enough, he gives the same answer in the text both times. I've been very passionate for the Lord God of heavenly forces. I've been doing my work. Lord, I've been faithful to you. Because the Israelites have abandoned your covenant. And I'm continuing to work even harder to show people that you are the Lord. I've been working harder and guess what? I ain't getting nowhere. Some of you might feel like that at home, at work, in the community. I'm working hard and I ain't getting nowhere. I might even be backsliding a little bit. I'm not getting anywhere. And he complains that they've torn down the altars, murdered the prophets. And he says, I'm the only one left. And now they want to take my life too. And isn't it our human nature when things get really hard to begin to see ourselves as the only one left? The only one who's working hard? The only one who really cares? The only one who's tried to make a difference. As we, as I've been thinking about the only one, I've been thinking about this book. I have another kid's book. The kids have slipped away for a little bit. Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Bad Day. Alexander's a little boy. He goes to sleep with bubble gum in his mouth and wakes up with bubble gum in his hair. He wakes up with bubble gum in his hair, and then he goes and he has cereal in the morning, and you may remember when cereal always had prizes in it, and his box didn't have a prize. And then he gets in the carpool, and he's the only one that doesn't have a window. And he complains and says he's gonna get sick and nobody notices or acknowledges him. He goes to school and his teacher likes somebody else's drawing better than his. And he makes a mistake in counting. And so he's having a bad day. And his friends say that he's not the best friend or the second best, he's like the fourth best friend. And so he gets really frustrated and he thinks, I just like to go to Australia. That's his happy place. His safe place to go to is Australia. And his day continues like this. He comes to lunchtime and he's the only kid whose mom forgot to put dessert in. Yep, he's the only one. And goes out throughout the day, he feels like he is the only one. And his go-to is to run away to Australia. And isn't that sometimes how we want to run away somewhere? <laughs> Get away. 
Sometimes we do need a timeout. Yes, even adults need timeouts. Sometimes we need a timeout. Sometimes we just need a short break. Sometimes we need a vacation. And sometimes we need something that's a lot longer, like a sabbatical, like Elijah had. And sometimes maybe we even need to retire to do something different, right? He gets to that point where he needs to do something different. But his world is closing in on him like Alexander's is. And Elijah feels like he's the only one. And there he is in that cave and God is asking him, what are you doing here? Why are you hiding? Why are you running away? Why have you abandoned your mission field? Elijah's run so much, he says, you know what? I'm, I'm done here. I've done as much as I can. I'm ready to die. He sounds like someone who's really depressed. And sometimes we get that way too. We can get that way too. And God says, there's hope. There's hope. See, Elijah, all these great things are happening for him, just like those little breadcrumbs that we're given in life that God gives to us, but we miss them. He sees himself as the only one. And God reminds him, you're not the only one. There's 7,000 more of people in Israel. 7,000. You're not the only one. You have, are one of many. And in God speaking to Elijah here and coming in a fire and coming in an earthquake and coming in the wind and coming in the quiet, God is present in the noisy, God is present in the quiet, and God is present in between. It wasn't until the silence came that he could hear that still, quiet voice. And sometimes we need some silence in our lives to hear that still, small voice too. Trevor Hudson, the author of Questions God Asks Us, says this. He talks about a story that he heard that illustrates this truth of needing to listen for this divine whisper. He says a young man was going through a difficult time and he didn't know which way to turn. So he went to visit the old preacher for guidance. Pacing about the preacher's study, the young man ranted and raved about his problem. I've begged God to say something to help me. Tell me, sir, why does God not answer? And the old preacher who sat across the room said something in reply, something so quiet that it was almost inaudible. The young man walked across the room. What did you say? He asked. The old man repeated himself, but again spoke very quietly. So the young man moved even closer until he was leaning in the old man's ear. Sorry, he said, I still can't hear you. With their heads close together, the old preacher whispered once more, God sometimes speaks so quietly that we have to move very close to hear the divine whisper. This time, the young man heard and understand what the old man was trying to tell him. He goes on to say, God's still small voice means that we need to move much closer and to become much more still if we want to hear what God might be whispering to us. There's no better opportunity for us to slow down and listen than we're tired and worn out. No better time to slow down and listen than when we're tired and worn out. And friends, sometimes we can be physically tired and worn out. Our bodies need more rest than what we're giving, that rhythm that we have in life of rest and activity is out of balance. And sometimes our physical bodies might be very much rested, but our emotional side of us is not. Emotionally, we can be very tired and exhausted. That's an invitation from God to lean in, to listen to God whispering to us. 
For God desires for us to be rested and renewed. There is a mission for each of us. Sometimes we get to this place because, not because we've been doing too much, but because we're not necessarily doing the right thing. And we might have been doing what God is wanting us to do, but it might be a time in which God is calling us to something different. And that was the case for Elijah. He had been God's faithful servant. God's faithful servant. And he needed to get away to get a perspective. Because, friends, sometimes we look through clouded glasses. Our perspective is clouded. And God says, come, come see what I see. Come see through my eyes. Come and see. Come and get a different perspective. For God looks more for faithfulness than success. God looks at quality over quantity. God takes a long-term view of things. God's more concerned about people than things. God desires for you to be rested, to be able to be fully restored so that you can face whatever it is in your life and in this world. Sometimes we need to take a break so we can see through God's eyes. To see that God is there feeding us along the way like God has fed Elisha. To know that God is listening to us like God did to Elijah. To know that God is powerful and present, present in mighty ways and in quiet ways. Sometimes we need a break so we can experience this. And it's okay to take that break. Sometimes it's a short one, sometimes it's a longer sabbatical. But remember this, God is gonna call you back into the mission field just like he did Elijah. Go back. I imagine Elijah doesn't what he wanted to hear. Can I just stay here in your presence? Just stay right here. Stay where it feels good and safe and secure. And God's questioning, where does your safety and security come from? Does it come from me or does it come from worldly things? Where does it come from? If it comes from me, don't worry, I'm with you. I'll go back with you. And he tells him to go back and appoint successors. For God calls us to do things for a season. And sometimes that season is a very long time, and sometimes it's a short time. And sometimes our next step is to point a successor. And I don't say that to point to anyone in this congregation that needs to give a successor to anything that you're doing. Don't read into that. That's not where I'm going. But if God's going there with you, go with God. Because <laughs> sometimes that's what God is calling us. To appoint someone else to do what we are doing or to let someone else appoint them. It doesn't mean that God is done with you as long as you're still breathing and all of you are who are here with us. You are still breathing. God still has a mission for you. There's something for each of us to do to engage in this mission of God. God is with us. Our mission as a United Methodist Church is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. At Hopewell, we follow the teachings of Jesus to feed the hungry, clothe the needy, comfort the sick and lost, care for those in need, and reach out and welcome the stranger. We follow the teachings of John Wesley, who calls us to focus on God's love and not punishment, for salvation is available to all. And all are to hear that message through us. We are to pray without ceasing, to be a singing and joyful people, to put love into action, not just on Sunday morning, but every morning. God has a mission for us as a church. And God's asking us, what are you doing here? 
We've been here for 217 years. Did I get the math right? We've been here a long time. We know how we got here, right? Or we can look in our history books that tell us how we got here. But God is asking us to look at where are we going? Not just where have we been, where are we going? God is leading us. May we see through God's eyes. In the name of Jesus, amen. And God feeds us in a multitude of ways, amen? Yes. And one of those ways in which God feeds us is through the sacrament of Holy Communion. And some of you are here today because you came to participate in taking of communion. All are welcome at the communion table. It's Jesus who sets the table. It's the Lord's table, not my table, not your table, but yes, it's all of our table. But it's Jesus who sets the table and welcomes us all. All are welcome to the table. All are worthy to come to the table. Let's prepare our hearts and minds for that. We're going to sing together, and then we're going to pray together. Let us sing, be present at our table, Lord. ages in our busy lives we do not always make time to love to pray or to sing your praises we want to be strong yet we often feel out of control buffeted by the winds of change rocked by the earthquakes in our relationships burned by the fires of doubt forgetting what we cannot see we ask why have you forgotten me Help us trust your presence, even when we feel utterly alone, trapped in our dark night of the soul, with the promise of Christ as our hope. Lead us from our own wilderness wanderings into the well-tended garden of your love. Amen. The steadfast love of God is with you yesterday, today, and tomorrow. Whether you turn away or doubt, whether you follow timely or joyfully, you are loved and forgiven in Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We lift up our hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, O merciful one, our creator of heaven and earth. Lord, you formed us in your image, breathed into us the breath of life, and you claim us as good as your beloved children. You sat before our forefathers and mothers the opportunity to build a community glorifying you, reflecting your love, your peace, your justice, and your mercy. When we stray and go our own way, your love remains steadfast. You delivered us from slavery to sin, made a covenant to be our sovereign God. You continue seeking us this day reaching out with your love, sharing your vision of heaven here on earth. With joy and thanksgiving, we join your people on earth and all the company of heaven, praising your name and joining their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Holy is one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, who healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church. 
delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and the spirit. Your spirit anointed the prophet Elijah. Your spirit anointed Jesus, our savior. Your same spirit renews us calls us forth from hiding and sends us into the world to be authentic in authentic loving relationships with all your people in remembrance of your mighty acts in jesus christ we proclaim the mystery of faith christ has died christ has risen christ will come again On that night when Jesus gave himself up to be arrested and to be crucified, he took bread, bread that was at the table where they were all eating, where he was gathered there with his friends. And he gave thanks to God. And he broke the bread. And he said, take, eat, this is my body given for you. Take, eat in remembrance of me. And they ate. And when the supper was over, Jesus took the cup, the cup that was there on the table. And I imagine he looked all the disciples in the eye. And he gave thanks to God and he gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take drink in remembrance of me. And I want to invite everyone, those that have individual elements with them, if you've chosen that, to take those in your hand. I'm going to bless them and to bless the elements that are here as well. So if you're with us at home, please put those in your hands at this time. Let us pray. Lord, pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. May they be to us the body and blood of Christ. May all who partake know of your love and mercy. May these gifts draw us together so that we can be one with Christ, one with one another, O Lord. Poured out, united in mission, embodying God's radical, unending love. Until Christ comes again in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Let us pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And I want to invite John to come forward. If anyone would prefer the individual communion elements, we have those there. Otherwise, we'll come forward um, and to uh, take a piece of bread and uh, take a cup with you, or we can bring it to you if you're not able to, to come forward. We're happy to do that as well. So as soon as John comes up, the table will be set and we will be ready for you.
Let us pray together. Lord, we give thanks for this holy sustenance you have offered to us. You have filled us with your spirit and prepared us to go forth into the world, sharing the good news of Jesus' transformative love, grace, and mercy. Thank you. Amen. Let's stand as you're able and sing, Standing on the Promises. really good. It's so good to hear you sing so joyfully. As we were singing standing on the promises, I know we stand on the promises of the Lord. And those promises come to us directly from God. The promises come to us through through young children. The promises come to us through the scriptures. Hopefully they come to you through the messages that you hear. They come from a multitude of places. And I'm also reminded that they come from people that are a part of our community. As we were singing that song, it brought me back to a kid singing in a church about this size with a community gathered together, standing on the promises of the Lord. And indeed, that's a tradition that we pass on making sure people know that we can stand on the promises of the Lord. Indeed, there are many ways that we can live out our faith in the community. Um, one is that is through the giving uh, to our food pantries and to our homeless ministries through the service of our time. We can do that through sending letters um, to Zach Klein, who's in basic training, we can do that through participating in Bible study and sharing our stories. I invite you to come to Bible study on Tuesday night. Come be a part of our study. It might not be as cute as the little ones here. 
We do have a good time online. <laughs> I think they should join us. <laughs> it is beautiful to see them here. I love it. Um, next week, we are going to celebrate some of our outreach ministries we've been engaged in this summer. I'm going to share a little bit from my experience at Camp Otterbein. I've got a, a video um, from Amos's work camp. Um, that, that they went on. Um, if you would like to share about a mission that you've been involved in this summer, or share a story from your service, I invite you to do that. So please let me know, and it'll be a time of celebrating. Two weeks from now, when we're back here, I want to focus on a back-to-school blessing. And I'm going to ask each of you to consider participating in that. Don't get scared and run away and don't come back. You're welcome whether you participate um, this way or another way, because you all participate through your presence. But I want to invite you to come that day and to bring a back-to-school blessing. So maybe something that your parent or your grandparents said to you as you went back to school, or your hopes and your dreams for the children and our teachers and the school personnel, whatever that may be. And some of you are great at writing out prayers. Some of you might have a phrase you want to share or a thought that comes to mind. Some of you are very creative in giving a blessing through your art. It can come in any form. And if you're worshiping with us online, you're welcome to participate and send those things to us as well so that we can have a celebration of back to school and that we can have a blessing. We'll have it on our Facebook and our YouTube channel. And that'll be something that we can share with the wider community as well. This is our blessing for our community. So I want to invite you to participate in that. There is one announcement that didn't make the bulletin. Um, I will be out of town Wednesday night through Saturday. I'm available by phone. Uh, I just need to see some friends and family in Illinois real quick before school starts. So I'm still available um, over phone. And if there is a pastoral emergency, I could connect you up with a pastor who is, who is present in person as well. So. As you go forth from here, may you be filled up, filled with the spirit, the spirit that speaks in that quiet voice sometimes, and the spirit that speaks in a loud shriek sometimes too. It's okay, the spirit comes in a multitude of ways. And we give thanks for the children that are here. So, so go forth filled up with the joy that we've seen and the energy that we have here as you go into the world this day. And remember this as you go into the world. For some in this world, love is a stranger. May they find in you to be the most generous of friends and filled with joy like the children. Amen. Amen. Amen.